hey guys so in this lecture we will understand what is data binding in WPF now in all my previous lectures we have been using data bindings in some way or the other say for example in lecture of triggers we were binding the properties as static resource so you might be having a very fair idea of data bindings in WPF and if you do not have any idea about data binding so in this lecture we will understand what is data binding in WPF so what we will do in this lecture we will understand what are various modes of bindings those are available in WPF and let uh, let us try to understand those different modes of binding which are present in WPF now in this example I will be using a very simple slider control and a, and a text box, box control and I will bind that the property of that slider into that text box so let's try to jump into slides first and understand what is data binding in WPF so WPF vastly uses data binding model for displaying or using data so any form of data which need, needs to be displayed onto the screen is displayed with the help of data binding so you can say that if there is a database and from that database we need to display that data onto the screen we use data binding so the data from where the data is coming is called as source and the property to which we need to bind that data is called target so you can see the second point we can use any object as the data source such as database xml collection etc and bind it to the wpf ui element say for example text box text block etc and the properties of these text blocks text box list box etc are called targets now there is a very important point to remember that whatever be the target property is present that is always a dependency property and this is often asked in interviews too so always remember that the target property is always a dependency property in data binding now there are four modes of data bindings in WPF and which is shown in our next slide so let's jump into that slide you can see these are the four modes this is one way two way one way to source and one time and this this thing here represents the target and this thing here is called source so these four modes are self-explanatory so you can say if this is a database and this is a UI element say text block the value from this database will be displayed onto the text block okay so this is the target now if the binding is one way you can only bind from source to the target if there is two way so you can bind from source to the target and when the target property will change the source property will also change and then there is one way to source which binds in the opposite dire directions so when you change the target it will change the source but vice versa will not be true and then there is one time which is basically which basically happens during the application initialization so this binding is, is uh, defined in the constructor of our application so all these points will be very clear once I go through our example so let's move to Visual Studio and let me have a stack panel and inside that stack panel let me have a slider control okay now let me give, give a name to this slider so this will be my slider okay and the minimum value of this slider will be 0 and maximum value will be 100 okay let me close this slider and then let, let me have a text box to display the value of this slider let me give it the name my txt okay and let me give it a width of 50 and to the text property which is a dependency property so this text property will be the target okay and source will be the slider so the text property which is the target is a dependency property so remember target is always a dependency property okay so let me give the binding attribute 
and let me specify the element name that is my slider and the path of this binding will be the value of the slider and then we need to specify the mode the binding mode so let me specify the mode and let's first try the one time one way and let me close this text block text box sorry and let's try to run this and you can see my data binding is happening but it's not happening in the whole numbers so i guess we need to have a property for the whole numbers so this is this is snap to tick enabled property so if we have this property in the slider control this will take to the nearest whole number so let me try to run this again and show you and you can see our data binding is working perfectly so the value of this slider is increasing and decreasing and same value is updated in here and what happens if i change this value say suppose i change it to 90 nothing happens that's because our binding mode is one way so this is the source that is this slider is the source and this text box is the target or you can say the text box text property is the target so i am updating this target property with the help of this source but vice versa is not true that's because our binding mode is one way so let's make it two way and try to see what happens let's try to run this again so this is working perfectly and let's try to change this value and you can see our slider has gone to the position what we have specified let's make it one and you can see our slider has gone to the first position okay let me make it 10 and it has gone to the 10th position okay but something doesn't seem right right means i am changing the value here my slider is still at the 10th position the moment i press a tab or take out the mouse from this text box then only my slider is going to the 50th position okay so why is this happening that's because if we are using two-way mode we need to use the update source trigger property and this is what what is mentioned in my slide so let's move to the slides for a moment so in case we are using two-way bindings we need to update the source that target has changed and you need to update yourself and this is done with the help of update source trigger property so let's see that in action so let me have update source trigger property and then we need to specify the property changed so we are specifying here that whenever this source prop uh, the target property is changing we need to update the source that is this slider let's try to run this again and see what happens you can see this is working fine let me make it 100 and it has gone without me pressing the tab or without me going out of this text box let me have 50 let me have 5 let me have 59 so it goes like this okay that's because we have we are updating the source as soon as this target property is changing and this is achieved with the help of update source trigger property so let's see what are the options those are available with this property so first is default then there is explicit then there is lost focus and then there's property change so if we don't specify anything it will by default take as lost focus as default i hope you understood but this update source trigger is only valid with the two-way bindings so i guess we have seen both one way and two-way bindings so let me try it again and let me update it here so it's working perfectly let's try to make this as one way to source so let me make it one way to source and let's try to run this 
and you can see whenever I am changing the source my target is not updating that's because it's the reverse binding it's one way to source so when I will change the value here that is from target to source then only this value will be changing in the slider so only the source value will be affected so this is called one way to source its direction is only one way and that is towards source by changing the source my target is not updating and let me now show you the four type of binding which is called one time let's try to run this and you can see nothing will happen that's because this binding only works during the application initialization or the bindings which happens during uh, in the constructor of the applications so I'm I'm moving the slider my my target is not updating I'm changing the target my source is not updating so let me close this and go to the constructor of my application so this is the constructor of this application and let me set a value to the my slider okay so let me set it as 50 okay and then to the my txt text box text property let me bind my slider dot value dot to string okay so i'm converting this value 50 which I have stored into this my slider dot value and then I am storing this my slider dot value in my text dot txt so let's try to run this now and you can see during the application initialization my binding has taken place okay and after application is initialization nothing happens so this type of binding only takes place during the application initialization that is when the constructor fires for the first time so i hope you have understood these four four modes of binding and you also should have understood what is the role of update source trigger property in the two-way binding mode so let's move back to our slides so these are the slides for you to note it down so thank you so much guys for listening if you have any doubt please leave a comment below and please do subscribe to my channel thank you so very much